Shall we need to write one? All right. So this is all about, and um, even we provide a job support and certification assistance for Red Hat. Okay. So let's do one thing. I'll very fastly get into a webinar. So let me go. So today, like uh, we all joined here uh, for the Red, Red Hat Ansible webinar to understand what is Ansible here, right? And I uh, just muted you, thank you. Uh, so we will see like uh, uh, what is Ansible here and how the Ansible is going to help out the IT infrastructure, all these things, right? So many people know that Many people know that Ansible is an automation tool. Ansible comes under DevOps tool, right? So how it is used. But before I start the webinar, before I start going with Ansible, let me let us also discuss about without these automation tools, without these DevOps tools, how the IT infrastructure was running how the system administration or database administration or a storage administration, or you might talk about VMware, I mean, virtualization environments, how it is used to run. See, when you go back a 10, 15 years back, you know, uh, you might talk about any IT infrastructure management. We used to do all this tasks, you know, manually right like we used to follow a document and we used to perform the step step i mean we used to follow the all the steps step by step step by step and we used to complete our workload or requirements whatever it is there right now <clears throat> many times many people have a question what is a problem boss if you follow step by step Yes, even you go for automation also, we will go for step-by-step step only. But the problem is time, time consumption, right? You know, a 15, I mean, a 10 years back, if a system had been asked to build a server, you know, a new server, it used to take nearly three to four weeks to build a server. And if it is a brand new server, right, it used to take more than seven or eight weeks to buy a server, to bring that server to your data center and cable it, power it, test it, so many things we used to do, it, right? Two months, I'm telling you literally two months, right? Not only I'm not talking about system admin, you might talk about database also, you might talk about any other thing also. It is, it used to take a lot of time to bring, to build, to test and to bring into a production environment. This is what the exactly the IT infrastructure used to run a 10 years back. Then, you know, when this DevOps tool or automation tool has came into an existence, the entire infrastructure has been changed. You know, on the fly, over a night, people are trying to make your environment ready. Right? How it is possible? How it is possible? Because of this DevOps tool, because of this automation tool. Now, okay, fine, you're understanding that this DevOps tool or automation tool is going to fulfill your requirement very fastly over a night on the fly. You just say like this, within a two minutes, I will prepare 50 missions for you, 100 missions for you. You give some requirement in the morning, within evening, I can build even a hundred machines, 200 machines or 500 machines or thousand machines, you know, center, data centers, right? So how it is possible here because of this automation tools. But let me, before I go to this automation tool, many people here also confused between what is DevOps tool and automation tool. You're getting my point because when I talk about DevOps, okay, Dev plus Ops, that is called Dev stands for development and Ops stands for operational. You're getting my point? Dev stands for DevOps and Ops stands for operational. That means the tools that we are using here, it might be anything. It might be a puppet, it might be a chef, it might be a Jenkins, it might be any other tool, Terraform, or it might be Ansible, whatever it is. They're all used for Dev plus 
ops ops is nothing but operation so operations is nothing but system admin operation it operations database operations it, this is what exactly in a short form we call something called devops this is what exactly that means whatever the devops tool that we are using that can be used from development to operation development to production development to pre post production this is what exactly it is going to work so here i hope your doubt is clear what is devops so here ansible also comes under a devops tool but it is famously called as automation tool right so it can be used in all the areas of your it infrastructure right from development testing okay from pre production post production everywhere it has been used right even it will be used somewhere in it infrastructure or orchestration we call okay so we will also discuss what is this orchestration here so this are all the areas this ansible is used right so let's get into the like a webinar here we will exactly get in so ansible is an open source automation tool right when i say open source you know like what is open source open source in a sense the code is open to everyone so many of the people might be having a doubt what i do with the code when i don't know how to use ansible you know there are many people around the globe who are working on this ansible and the fast development is going on very fast i'm telling you is that speed the development is happening you're getting it okay so this is what exactly the development is going on right getting my point so you might be also having a doubt okay fine bot uh, fine boss the devops i mean ansible is an open source automation tool then how the people are developing what coding language we need right for example you might be going for some other things people say that you should learn bash scripting perl scripting python scripting ruby rails so many things okay so here you should understand one thing here is ansible is developed developed based on python right so basically if you know people all over the globe who knows very well who are very much expert in python they are going i mean they are taking the source of ansible and they started developing it right so this is basically how it's going to happen okay their contribution is very high when it comes to ansible you know their high their contribution is very high when it comes to ansible that's the reason ansible within a very low span of time i'm telling you there are many tools comes into a market they take around 15 years 20 years to get into the market to become very famous tool right but ansible is not like that as it came into an existence right it has become a very famous tool people stopped using other commercial tools and they started using this ansible that is the power of ansible here right so this is the reason why ansible is very much powerful right so we will see that so there is an ansible community and there are many partners and individuals are contributing very high level contribution they are doing okay so we will be discussing that detailly and or a platform used for it tasks such as a configuration management application deployments intra service orchestration and provisioning these are all the areas this ansible automation tool is more used these are the areas where ansible automation tools are more used okay so configures both unix like system as well as microsoft windows so basically we can use this unix like means it is especially used for linux as well as unix also right basically the ansible was first developed for linux only and later it was also used in unix and it is now used in windows also right you can in, in you can automate your all the platforms here now let's get into the other things so let us discuss about the history of ansible So Ansible was released in 2012 by Michael D Hans. Michael D Hans is a developer, you know, same like a, you know, he has a vast experience in development. He works in DevOps tools. Okay, before 2012, he was having another 15 years of experience in DevOps tools. And um, 
you know he he is very much interested in coding development right this is what exactly is what so what he did is as you know uh, is michael d hans who has been worked in configuration management and infrastructure orchestration in one from the honor from i mean another from many years that he was working for one to one i mean many tools he was working on many tools from many years right so as he was working in many tools from many years like he was always having okay he was always having a doubts he was always having a queries why don't these companies provide all the features into one single tool right but still he can't go to all these companies and he can't ask right so what he did is very simple okay he have decided to develop a new tool with his all experiences right then what he did is you know whatever the uh, tools he was using like michael d hans found uh, many companies were using separate tools to automate their workload configuration management for configuration management people are using puppet chef and cf engine for server deployments they are using capistrano fabric and for hard hoc commands they are using this commands like function planes ssh plain ssh command right so what he did is he wrapped up all these features into a one single tool that is called ansible right so what he did all the configuration management server deployments and you can you know do other things like using the ansible this is a power of ansible here this is a power of ansible right so this is what exactly and uh, what he does it did is uh, as i told you that ansible is developed based on the python but python is a back end program remember why i am telling it is a back end program i will tell you see you are working on linux right you are working on linux assume that as you are working on linux um like you know as a system administrator but linux was developed based on some uh, you know unix level programming or c c++ like this so before you will start learning the linux are we going with are we going to learn the c or c++ it's not required because for linux c c++ or unix level programming is totally a back end program right we are just trying to learn the commands and we know how to use the commands we are just trying to perform our all task at the upper level of your system administration right at the same time when it comes to ansible also as the ansible was developed based on the python but still we don't know don't need to learn python because we are not going to do any coding at the back end right we are just going to write you know we are just trying to use something called python i mean uh, ansible modules to perform your tasks like how do we use the commands inside the linux in a same way ansible is going to provide something called modules very simple right so this is what exactly it has been happened now let's go with the other things here so basically what happened is as the, you know that ansible right now with red hat why because in 2000 in 2015 red hat has acquired ansible okay and they have also taken michael d hans and they have made the head of the project for ansible team for what reason for what reason red hat has undertaken or acquired this ansible because the and they want to develop this ansible for the enterprise level companies for enterprise level tooling okay for the enterprise level environments when i say enterprise level environments the ansible tower is especially used for big environments where you see 5000 10000 20000 or more than that servers are been managed with a very simple effort using a tower okay so this is the reason why they have uh, taken the ansible and they have developed they have enhanced and they have taken this to the next level to the industry and wherever you go in the industry you will see ansible tower is much used and it is user friendly it is web based ui right so let me give you an information here when i just talk about ansible ansible provides us two types of tools two types of software one is ansible engine okay this is purely a command line tool command line automation tool okay and we have other tool that is called ansible 
Java. This is a web-based UI. Okay. This is totally a GUI tool, GUI automation. This is what exactly. Okay. So of course in our training, we are going to cover engine. We are going to cover engine uh, a 30 hours training and another 10 hours will be, we will be discussing about Tava, right? It's a combination of engine and Tava, right? So this is what exactly it is going to be. Okay. So this is all about, we are having, we are going to see the two types of tools, right? And what answer, what Red Hat says is the engine is for small companies, small companies and tower is for enterprise level companies, right? So this is basically how they came up with. Now let us go now here. So this is a information here. Now what, why we have to go for Ansible? Let us discuss here, right? So first of all, Ansible, you know, it's very simple. Why it is very simple? Human readable automation, no special coding skills needed human readable automation, no special coding skills are needed. A person without any coding skills can get into Ansible. Now you will say, how? See, take an example when it comes to scripting, right? We talk normally about script, right? If you want to write a script without a bash or any other scripting, can I write a script? No, we can't. But at the same time, when it comes to Ansible, right? You need to write a code and that code is something called playbook. This is called playbook. And you know, and these playbooks are written based on YAML. And you know, what is this YAML? Like Python, like Perl, like JSON. YAML is also one coding language, right? So you'll say that you're saying that YAML is also a coding language. Now tell me whether should I learn YAML? Not required. Then how I'm going to write a playbook here? You should know very minimum things about the YAML. Okay, very minimum means it will just take five to 10 minutes or it will take, if I take a good example, you will learn YAML in 20 minutes, that's it. And after 20 minutes, from the 21st minute, you will start writing a playbook on your own. Okay, this is such a simple way that we are going to write a playbook using a YAML. Okay, so this is what exactly we are going to do it. Okay, they're not asking you to learn the YAML. They're asking only how to use YAML to write a playbook, that's it. Okay, getting it. You know, they're not asking you to learn entire coding. They're asking how to use it. How to use it means we should follow some space intendations. We should follow some orders. This is what they're asking you to do. They are just asking you to understand what is list, what is dictionary, dictionary of list, and list of dictionary. This is a terminology of YAML exactly. Getting it. So this is what exactly we're going to do. So when I'm just talking about the playbook, so it is such a simple thing. You can learn just now and you can write a playbook just now as an expert. This is important here, right? So this is the important thing. So the YAML, YAML, we also call it as a data serialization language, or we also call it as a data digitalization language it is called. Right. So this is the importance about the YAML here. So the human readable automation, no special coding skills are needed. A task execute in order used by every team and get product quickly. Okay. This is what exactly, that's the reason it is, very, it is called very simple. It is called very simple. And Ansible is also very powerful. Why we are calling it is powerful? Because you can use this Ansible for application deployment. You can use it for configuration management. You can use it for workflow automations. You can use it for network automation. And even you can use it for orchestrating the application lifecycle management. So these are all the areas, the core areas that Ansible is used. So that is the reason people you know, are going for, instead of using separate tools for application development, if instead of using separate tool for our prestation, instead of using separate tool for configuration management, people stop using different tools and they have come up with one single tool that is collapsible. It is going to fulfill all your project and in IT infrastructure or cloud infrastructure requirements. This is a benefit here, 
right now let's go into the other powerful you know uh, feature of ansible is agentless so you can use ansible using ssh or vinrm so let me show you this example here so we talk about puppet or chef right so basically puppet and chef is purely it is a agent base right assume that we are talking about a puppet server here puppet server and we are calling it as a puppet client right so the puppet server why we are calling puppet server because puppet is installed and puppet is running from here puppet is installed and puppet is running from here and this is called a client why we are calling it as a client because the puppet agent is installed here <laughs> agent is installed here right so without this agent this particular client is not recognized by the server you know that right so basically this is the basically like how so you might have a doubt are this is a default uh, um, you know architecture of any tool right you might go with any tool that you are going to use it it is you know server and client based only basically without any agent it doesn't work right you might take any database tool you might take any tool you take it basically we need agent this is a default architecture of a tool in industry right but okay then what is the problem here is take a small example i will tell you the exact problem here is assume that you have purchased a 100 license 100 machines license from the puppet right and what you did slowly it might it has taken you have deployed all the 100 machines the 100 clients has been added to the puppet server everything is fine later on after you put built all these things later on like you want to add another 25 machines to the existing environment so what you need to do you need to go to a vendor and you need to buy another 25 license okay you might be using it for 2 months 3 months 5 months 10 months whatever it might be it might be a short term or a long term project whatever it might be so you need to contact your management you need to convince your management you need to place an order again so all involves in lot of permissions lot of interaction and it involves in commercials everyone should accept everyone should give you noc then only you can buy and you can go for it okay you can't tell that we are going you can't tell the your vendor puppet vendor saying that we are going to just use for 6 months okay just leave it no he don't leave it right he will ask you to buy 100% license for it right but whereas when you go for you know ansible if you take the same environment for the ansible here now take an example this is my ansible here this is my ansible okay client so basically when it comes to ansible the machine where we install ansible it is called control node it is something called control node and the the client machine is called something called managed node this is something called managed node this is called control node and this is managed node why we are calling control node here because ansible is installed here and now you might we having a question how do we communicate from control node to managed node as we discuss it is an agentless we don't use any agent we try to use ssh and ssh can communicate in two ways one is password based the another one is you know key based that is only we call it as an ssh key based authentication or ssh passwordless authentication we call right so basically we try to use ssh key based authentication for the communication from control node to manage node right so the no special coding i mean no special license is i mean uh, is required here why because you know because we are not going to have any agent because it communicates with the default ssh service so you know you need to just inform your management saying that even we don't inform your management also nothing is going to work here if you are using for two months three months or four months or six months also nothing is going to happen you can just use it if you need any support then we will go to the red hat but otherwise we not require so this is exactly the uh, ansible is going to work and one more thing you need to understand when i talk about puppet and chef puppet and chef is nothing but a pull mode tools pull mode means the entire code need to be pulled from the client 
that is using a puppet agent, but Ansible is purely a push mode. It's a push mode software. The entire code will be pushed from the Ansible control node to the manage node. This is what Excel. Okay, what is mean by code? Code is nothing but playbook. Code is nothing but playbook. Remember this, code is nothing but playbook. <clears throat> is this clear? So this is basically how it's going to work, right? We are going to use an SSH. And as you know that everyone who was working on Linux and Unix, and even from Windows, they all very well know about SSH. We don't need any special training or special, uh, you know, uh, learnings for SSH, we are all using it. You know, you understand very well how the SSH will work, right? So this is the benefit, okay, when it comes to Ansible. That means Michael D. Hans has been removed all the dependencies. When a people look into an Ansible, they feel that, yes, this is all what I know. And they can very user, I mean, very friendly, they can work with Ansible without, you know, a lot of questions in your mind. This is what exactly. Right. So now what we'll do, we will do one thing. What can I do using Ansible? As we were discussing orchestration, you can do configuration management, application deployments and provisioning and continuous, I mean, CI CDs that is related to DevOps and security compliances. And on what, like firewalls, load balancers, containers. This is all, if you just see this image, you will come to know. These are all the areas like where Ansible can be used, right? It might be a cloud, it might be a virtualization, it might be a Windows network, DevOps, monitoring tools, operating systems, storages. There are many more tools, many more uh, technologies the Ansible is going to support, right? So let me also show you, I'm going to go a little bit practical here. Let me connect to my server here. See, this is my basically an Ansible uh, server here. So this is my control node. Let me connect to it. So as I connect, let me show you something about. So uh, Ansible hyphen hyphen version because Ansible is already installed here. I'll just try to run Ansible hyphen hyphen version. So this is a version of Ansible is installed on my machine here. This is a control node. And this is by default a configuration file which is existing here. Can you see this? And uh, this is the location where you see the modules. Okay, I'll tell you what is the modules here. So basically just let me go into this. I just want to show you the, uh, you know, categories categories of modules here. So you just go into the modules. Can you see there are so many categories, cloud, clustering, command, crypto, database. Uh, you can see even it is there for Windows. There's so many things we have. Let's take you into a cloud because many people, they're working on cloud. They want to use Ansible for cloud. So you, as you get into the cloud, see Ansible is going to support all these types of clouds. These many cloud vendors, the Ansible is going to support because as you, as you know, like a, Many people know about three, four clouds information. One is Amazon, Azure, and Google, right? Even VMware, right? Apart from see this many types of clouds, uh, uh, the Ansible is going to support, All right? So this is what the, the power of the Ansible here. Okay, you can go into something called database. You will see. See, Ansible is purely built for cloud and network. I'll try to show you one thing here. As we go into the network here, um, you will see this, these many network vendors, the Ansible is going to support. We have a separate training for Ansible for networking. <clears throat> There's a separate training for Ansible for networking, remember, right? In every environment, like how many servers, like we see, okay, in a same way, that many network devices you're going to find. It might be a firewall, it might be, uh, you know, switches, routers, it might be, you know, so many types of devices we will see in the net, right? So this is what exactly. We'll go detailly into it, just wait. <clears throat> These are all the tools that we are going to use. It. These are all the areas that Ansible can be used. Now let us discuss detailly about the architecture of the Ansible. As you join this webinar, you should know some detailed information about Ansible. Right, you should know the terminology 
all these things we are going to discuss. So when I'm just talking about Ansible here, very simple. When I talk about Ansible is like, uh, you know, we need a two machines to configure an Ansible, right? What is this two machines here is very simple. One machine is going to act as an Ansible um, engine, I mean, Ansible server. We call this as a control node as we discuss. Okay, then the other one will be managed node. Okay, so this is what exactly why we are calling it as control node because Ansible is already installed. Remember, Ansible is already installed here. Yes, that's the reason we are calling it as control node. And remember one thing, in order to install Ansible, install Ansible, okay, we need a dependency package. Dependency package is Python. Remember, we need a latest version of Python. Remember, latest version of Python. So basically, there is no problem about the Python because we are going to install these packages using like this yum install Ansible. Automatically, you know the what is a feature of yum. Yum will automatically resolve all the dependencies, respective dependencies, and it will install Ansible. There is no problem about installing Ansible, right? So you might also have a doubt why we need a Python. Just now we discussed, right? Ansible is developed based on the Python. That's the reason it need a Python program, right? Very simple. Now, good. So now as the Ansible is running here, that's the reason we are calling it as a control node. And managed node, when I'm talking about a managed node, most of the time people have a doubt, what could be a managed node? Okay, I will tell you one thing. Managed node can be an individual mission. Okay, when I say individual machine, it might be a Linux machine, it might be a Windows, it might be a Unix, it might be a Mac, yes, it will support, right? Apart from this, it might be, you know, a couple of servers in a rack, getting my point? It might be a couple of servers, couple of servers in the rack, okay, or it might be, it might be a cloud environment. It might be a cloud. You might take anything. You can manage your cloud also. Then apart from this, you can manage your network devices and storages also as a managed node, right? It can be your you know, network devices and storage also. I'm just trying to put like this. This is network devices and it might be storages. You can manage everything here. So this is what exactly you can manage everything using a control node, right? So when I say manage node, this is all comes under a manage node. It's well and fine. Now I hope you are understanding this. Okay. So now you should understand the other thing here is how you are going to manage is basically when you go to the Linux machine, right? Basically we try to use two types of user. One is root user. One is a, a regular user or a normal user we do. So we are going to manage the entire code. We are going to write all the code using a normal user only, right? So remember that this is very, very important. When I say normal user, it, we will try to create an Ansible user or we try to create something called DevOps user. Okay, and using this users only we are going to manage. Now, good. Now we are going to discuss something about, okay, uh, playbook here. What is playbook? Because if you want to perform anything on the remote managed node, take an example, you want to deploy MariaDB, you want to deploy HTTP, or you want to uh, upgrade the kernel, or you want to uh, perform health check, or whatever you want to do, or it might be a cloud, cloud environment where you want to configure a, a 100 EC2 instance, or you want to create a 10 S3 storage buckets, or I want to configure VPCs, or I want to configure uh, Route 53, or I want to configure some other things. You have to write a code. And what is that code is called here is, that is called playbook. We call it as a playbook, right? And as we discussed, playbook is written based on the YAML, right? Very simple. And as I told you that the YAML is a data serialization and data digitalization language, it is very simple to use. Right. So when it comes to an YAML, when it comes to a playbook here, the first condition here is, I will tell you, before you start writing a playbook, the extension of the playbook is very, very important. Take an example, you are trying to configure a playbook with the name called HTTP and the playbook extension should end with .yml or it should end with .yaml. 
this is the extension that you need to follow so you might ask me a question like if i don't follow this extension will it happens anything but it is strongly recommended to go with this extension why because by seeing this extension you will understand that it is a playbook because you will be working with you know unix or linux or windows and environments like to automate something okay and uh, you know if you don't put an extension it is re really tough to understand whether it is a normal file or a playbook so that's the reason it is always recommended to define an extension at the end of the playbooks that you write right getting it this is what exactly no okay fine we are trying to extend and this is a strong recommendation then how do we write a playbook here how do we write a playbook see before i write a playbook i will i, I will give you one example what is that example is most of the time we will be writing a shell script right so when you are writing a shell script you try to define a shebang do you remember shebang right so shebang is called a shell interpreter it is called because of using this interpreter the shell script will get executed right so at the same time when it comes to yaml also when you are trying to write a playbook using vi or a vim like http.yaml then the playbook always should start with using three dashes and it should end with three dots this is very very important rule that you need to follow the playbook always starts with three dashes and end with three dots even the ending is not mandatory the start is very very important the three dashes is very very important you should always start your playbook with three dashes and end with three dots right so this is how exactly we are going to go so let me give you one example here i'll try to show you one example i am having some playbooks with me so let me go with uh, <clears throat> the playbook here so su hyphen ansible so i'm going to get i'm going to get into a directory called project here so i'll just try to open the playbook here so can you see this playbook okay not this i'll try to open a playbook so just see this this is a playbook can you see this this is a playbook here you can see this the playbook has we have started with three dashes and the ending is as i said it is not mandatory and this is a playbook here okay actually what is playbook here is you will get confused here so this file is called playbook what is this http.yaml right i have opened this playbook with the name called second.yaml do you remember this is called playbook so inside this playbook when i just open this playbook inside this playbook this is a first play and this is a second play and inside every play we have something called task can you see this is a task and this is a task so this is how exactly it's going to be so this is a description of the first play here and to which host you are going to target i'm going to target a machine with the name called m node 1 that is called manage node 1 lab.com is my target and when i say task below the task the word i mean this terminology this is going to represent the task here can you see this this is a task so what is the first task we are going to do we are going to trying to install http package here we are using a module called yum yum is a module you know even you want to install a package also in red hat linux or in a linux flavors we try to use yum only right here also we are going to use the module called yum okay and what is this the name of the package and we are saying state present what is mean present present means install absent means remove latest means upgrade this is what exactly happens you're getting it so you might be having a doubt how i'll come to know about all these options okay so nothing to worry we have a very good documentation for all the modules like you know in linux you know the command but you don't know how to use this command what you do you try to open a man page right in the same way when it comes to the modules modules has a very good documentation here you can read the documentation and you can understand you can take many examples from that particular documentation right so this is how the playbook is written and this playbook is totally written based on the yaml and you should see the space indentations you should see the space indentations very very important so if you understand the space indentations that is sufficient you can simply start writing a playbook from the next minute okay so this is what exactly it is okay so you can see we want to install the http package and we want to start the service we are using a module called service right we are giving the service name we are saying enable yes and we are starting it 
right? The second play is all about installing MariaDB. See, I'm trying to install a MariaDB and I kept latest. Why I'm saying latest? Latest in a sense, you know, if MariaDB is already installed, it should upgrade. If it is not yet installed, it has to install. This is the meaning of latest, right? And the system D is a module which we are going to use to enable and start the service, to enable and start the service. So this is basically how it is going to work. This is how exactly it is going to work. Is this clear? <laughs> right? So this is something the how the playbook look here. Yeah. So always remember the playbook contains what? Play. Okay. So play contains host and host below the host, we have a task. And when I'm talking about a task here, remember one thing, when I'm talking about a task below the task, like we will have a task one and the task contains modules. Module contains argument task contains something, I mean, module contains arguments. This is what exactly we have. So this is the entire structure of your playbook. So always the playbook contains play, task, module, and argument. And don't consider host. Host is a part of play, nothing to worry. Okay, module is a part of task and argument is a part of module. What is argument? You know, options. When you go with a command, we have an options, right? In the same way, when it comes to <clears throat> Ansible module, the modules are going to have arguments. And remember one important thing here, whatever the modules that we are discussing, these all modules are developed based on what? Python, Python. Modules are developed based on Python. This is very, very important. Okay, so let me take you into this. I'll just try to show you one more thing. As I showed Ansible, iPhone, iPhone version, you try to run this and I'll just try to say CD. This is a path where you have all the Ansible modules are stored and just try to say LS, go to the, there is a directory with the name called modules. Can you see this? When you get into this, you see there are categories of modules. Let us go into the cloud, inside the cloud, go into Amazon, and just say LS, these are all the modules and see all the modules are written based on the Python that by seeing an extension, you will understand this. This is an extension here, right? So this are all the modules we have, right? You want to see like, a, uh, I want to create an EC2 instance. There is a module with the name called uh, Ansible hyphen doc. Like we have a man page, right? Man command. At the same time, we have Ansible hyphen doc to list the modules or to read the documentation of the module here. See, sorry, I just run YAM. Yeah, okay. I just want to run EC2. So EC2 is a module. What is the use of EC2 module? Creates and terminates EC2 instance. And this module has options. These are all options, exactly. Like a command has options, right? At the same time, EC, I mean, this modules also has so many options here. You need to follow these options and based on these options only, you need to create a playbook for creating an EC2 instance, right? Just come down. You can see there are some examples here. So this is a playbook only. I mean, this is a code written in YAML. This is where, can you see this? Right. Even you can just copy and paste into your playbook and that's, that's it. It will start creating a EC2 instance for you. So this is what not. I'm just giving an example about the cloud uh, modules here. But as you know that this training, we start from from Linux administration. But of course, we also cover. We will try to touch the cloud also. I'll try to show you two, three examples, like how do we configure EC2 instance? How do we configure a, uh, S3 storage buckets? Or I'll try to show you other things. How do we work with user administration inside the cloud? I'll try to show you that also. I'll also show you how to communicate from your control node to your AWS API console also. I'll try to show you all these things. We are taking example about the cloud only. If you want, we will try to see Azure also if possible, but time is very important here, but okay. Even apart from time, I'll try to show you how to communicate with Azure also, right? So this is basically how it's going to be, right? These are all the modules and uh, you know, I'll just try to come out of this and you can read, you know, Ansible hyphen doc. 
I have an EL, I'll try to put, and it is going to give you a list of modules that Ansible is going to provide. Ansible is going to provide around 3,387 modules we are having. 3,387 models that we are having here based on the version that we are using rightly, currently. And if the new versions comes into a market, definitely this count may go high. Getting it? So this is how exactly it's going to be. This is how exactly it's going to be. So these are all the modules that we are going to have, right? Now we have discussed something about you know, playbook, we have discussed something about the modules and you have understood that modules are developed based on the Python. Even if you are a good Python programmer, you can also develop the modules for your software, for your hardware, for your, um, you know, uh, whatever the tools that your company might be developing it, you can write a module using the Python. Now you should know what is inventory here. Inventory is very, very important that like you should understand about inventory. So before I talk about inventory, let me ask you one question. You know, many people who are working on Linux and Unix, you know what is the importance about ETC host, right? ETC host is a file where we try to, uh, you know, update IP address and host name. So why you are putting this IP address and host name? Because uh, if you want to you want to communicate with the remote machine with the host name. What you do? You'll try to collect collect the remote machine IP address and host name and put it in etc host file so that you can communicate with the remote machine with the host name. This is what exactly we do it right. So you will say that if I don't want to communicate with host name, then what we will do? We try to go for IP address. Right, but in most of the environment, it is not recommended to communicate with IP address because IP address is dynamic nowadays. Okay, the IP address may change at any point of time. Okay, last time you were communicating with the machine with 192.168.10.2, now the IP address got changed. Now, if you are connect using the same IP address instead of connecting to system A, you might be connecting to system B. This will be a problem. So that is the reason it is always recommended to communicate with hostname, right? At the same time, when it comes to Linux also, whatever the playbook that you are going to create, okay, and you want to target a particular remote machine and that remote machine's IP address or hostname or FQDN, that is called fully qualified domain name, need to be updated in the inventory need to be updated in the inventory. This is what exactly it is going to work, right? It is something called IP address, host name or FQD, and that is called fully qualified domain name need to be updated inside the inventory. Why? Because whenever you are trying to run a playbook, you know, the playbook looks into an inventory file for that particular host. If that particular host name found or IP address found inside the inventory, then only it is going to hit the target machine. Right. So I'll try to show you an example about inventory because we are having some inventories I have created here. Let me open VIM BIM inventory. So this is an inventory. See, I have listed the remote machines name or my man managed nodes names here in this inventory. Can you see this? I have defined server A, server B, server C, server D, or M node one, M node one dot lab dot com. This is called host name. This is called fully qualified domain name. This is called IP address. Or sometimes you can define within the groups also. This is called group web server, DB server, DC. This is all called groups. Can you see this? This is all called groups here. This is something called inventory. And remember, inventories are of two types exactly. Inventories are of two types. When I say that inventories are of two types, we have inventories. One is a static inventory. The another one is dynamic inventory. When I say static inventory, remember right now I showed an example, right? That is called static inventory. See, you want to target a specific 10 machines or 20 machines. Initially, we should gather the host names, IP address or fully qualified domain names of that particular machines and update in a file called inventory and you should target that machines. And what is dynamic is nothing but, especially we are going to use this dynamic inventories for the cloud, for virtualization. for the virtualization environments. For what reason is, you know, you know, in cloud environment, there are many machines will be coming up and going down. And as of, as the machine comes up, the IP address will change as the host name will change. Dynamically, the things will be changing. That's the reason we try to use a dynamic inventory. And uh, we are going to use some scripts to track 
machines dynamically. Okay, what are the scripts? We will be discussing detail as we get into the concepts. As we get into the concepts, we will try to discuss detail about it, right? So this is something called the inventories here, right? Now, apart from this, like inventories, we have something called APIs. APIs are very, very important because API stands for Application Program Interface. These are used to communicate with your cloud environments, right? Getting it? So to communicate with the cloud or Kubernetes or some other environment, we have to communicate using your APIs only. And we have a plugins. Plugins are enhancements of modules we call. There are some features which is not supported by the modules. Then we try to enhance, we try to get the plugins. Ansible provides a good number of plugins and we try to use these plugins to manage, right? And you should know what is CMDB. CMDB stands for Configuration Management Database. You know, it, it comes under CMDB tools, comes under ITIL process. It's an asset manager tool. There are many tools we are having. Right, like service now, right? Windows Active Directory, LDAP, or some other tools we have, right? Red Hat Satellite, right? This all comes under CMDB, right? And this is of exactly, and you can manage the individual host and networks using this architecture. So this is all about the terminologies when it comes to the Ansible. I hope you understood. You got some information, handful of information, like what is play, how the playbook is written, what is inventory, what is module. Okay, and uh, what is control node and manage node? How the infrastructure will be there? I hope you're understanding. If you have any queries, you can ask here. <clears throat> so find now, this is all about the things. <clears throat> yeah, now what we will uh, do I is- I have one question. Yeah, please. Uh, can you yes. show me the paint? This paint. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. This is a paint. So when you say that control node uh -huh. and uh, manage node, right? Mm -hmm. So control node, you maintain inventory mm -hmm. by giving uh, IP address, host mm -hmm. name, if you mm -hmm. So in the so suppose like in inventory, there are hundred systems. I mean mm -hmm. hundred. Uh, mm -hmm. The requirement is saying that hundred hosts have to be installed. Mm -hmm. In the different uh, locations, mm -hmm. uh, situated in different different locations somewhere. Mm -hmm. So uh, suppose tomorrow we say that like, oh no, we don't want it. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of the system up and running, so we mm -hmm. need to stop. Mm -hmm. So in that case, those are like uh, those are dynamic, right? We don't know where are they located. Yeah. So how do you how Please. do you do that actually? See, basically, when it comes to dynamic inventory, inventories, I mean, dynamic inventory is just to track. How do we track that? When you are tracking an machine, it gives you a lengthy information. It doesn't give you only the name. It gives you the IP address. It gives you in which region it is located. It gives you very detailed information about a machine. Right? Okay, and yeah, yeah, I got that one. You'll yeah, get, yeah. You will get that information. Fine. Information. So tomorrow, then, the clients... Yeah, please go on. Tomorrow, client says that. Oh, uh, I yes. So tomorrow, client says that I don't want uh, some of the systems. Yes. Which are located in some uh, you need a list of uh, uh, inventory. Mm -hmm. Those have to be down. Mm -hmm. So in that case, how do you you have to come back to control node and you have to take the control uh, the IP address of that host machine mm -hmm. and you have to update the inventory. Like no, we don't in update. See, take an example. You're going with static inventory. Assume that. I'll give you one example. Static inventory means what? Mm -hmm. You have you have already, there is a hundred machines already built and it is running. And suddenly you got some mm -hmm. re requirement saying that they want to remove 20 machines. Definitely they have to give you a 20 machines list to remove it because it's a static inventory. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Now take an example. You talk about cloud, right? So somewhere a six months back, a hundred machines, hundred EC2 instance has been built and uh, the project was running. Now the client says that we don't need another 40, the, we don't need a 40 machines, you want to remove it. Definitely when he Correct. says that he want to remove 40 machines, okay, he don't know why, where these 40 machines are there because in cloud environment, that is a situation, right? We built and we'll give it, they will yeah. just give you 40 machines list. right? Now what you will do, what is that list? He will say that we are using these 40 machines for so and so. Okay, if this project is ended, we want to remove this. 
right? So when they give this information as an Ansible admin, you will have the entire track about the machines which you have built and given to the teams. Getting my point. So you will have some tag names. You will give a tags tagging, right? You create a machines right. and you will give right. a tagging saying that this 40 machines yeah. is for Java, this 20 machines for production, this 20 machines is for Oracle, this 10 machines is for mm. some testing, like the tagging will be given. And when you try to yeah. put a filters and try to filter that within that filter, that 40 machines will be listed. Right. right. And then we try to hit that 40 machines to remove it. This is what exactly we do it. Yeah. So here the question is, yeah. when you say remove, because once you filter out based on the tag, mm. you will get a list of instant instances which are which you want to drop. Yes. Which you want to terminate basically. Right? Yes. Yes. So how do you how do you do that from control node? Yeah, control node. We control write control. we write a playbook. We write a playbook for that. We write a playbook for oh, that. Okay. Okay, see what we will do. We try to filter. The filtering will be done, right? The tag names will come. With the tag names, instance names will come, IP address will come, fully qualified domain name also it will come. Reason also it will come. Yes or no? Maybe the 40 machines is not in the same reason. It might be in a different reason. Right? You write a playbook. You will write a playbook for that. For example, the how do we write a playbook means I'll just try to show you an example. Ansible hyphen doc EC2. Okay. So what is the use of this module? Can you see this? You can create okay. as well as you can terminate this EC2 instance. Now, what mm. you will do, mm -hmm. you can just see this. This is the way, like, how do we create it? See, this is the way we are going to create. How many instances we are going to create? Five missions. And the tag is what? Okay. Can you see the tag? Are you seeing the tag? DB. Ah, this is very important. Yes. See, you can delete a machine not only with the tag, you can delete a machine using this VPC subnet ID also. Okay, subnet groups will be there using that. There are so many ways we can use it. Yeah. Yeah, you can see yeah. this example. You can see this examples here. Yeah. Can I see this? There's so, so many you examples. Might know that, like, you, you might know that instance is scheduler. Yes, the, instance uh, scheduler. So, yeah. Yeah. No, I'm so not that much into cloud. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, okay. So, yeah. no, 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 the thing is much more anyway. So, this yeah. is combined say that, okay, these systems, like the 10 systems are there, so mm -hmm. they're consuming a lot of, uh, the, the depends on the cost, right? Yes. So, they say the client is saying that, okay, only these systems start from 7 o'clock a.m. in the morning and stop, I mean, it's like kind of stop or in around 10 or 7 o'clock in the evening. Yes. So, it's that big... kind of automation. Yeah, that yeah. automation is possible with Ansible, right? Yes, hundred percent. Yes, it is supported. You can see this. I'm just trying to see dedicated tenancy examples, spot instance examples. Mm -hmm. Can you see this? Yes, okay. we can. We can. That the time schedulers we can put it up. That's not a problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, when you are creating an instance that you need to schedule it, right? The playbook doesn't. Playbook is used only to create and delete. While creating only, you will put all the schedulers mm -hmm. saying that this mission is required from morning uh, nine to evening six. Then after that, it should get shut down. Yes. Again, tomorrow morning, again, it should power yeah. on. Again, we will try to run one more playbook for it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that schedulers can be yeah, done. You write correct, correct. Yeah, that's yeah, that's that schedulers, schedulers, can schedulers are there, but schedulers are not there in engine. Schedulers are there in tower. The scheduler oh, okay. doesn't support. If you want to schedule in engine, you need to use a cron tab. Mm, correct. Yeah. The schedule, if you want to use such kind of schedules, you should use a cron tab. If it is a tower, yes, tower has a built-in scheduler. That is the reason people are switching from Ansible engine to tower because of these features only. See, for example, Ansible mm. engine is there. Ansible is just, there is no control here. You just see, I have written a playbook here with this name and you just see the permission. In my mission, anyone can read this file. Is there any security here? No. Maybe sometimes I am going to create a playbook which has a license, which has a SSH keys. It might have a, um, I'm going to connect to the AWS cloud environment. It might be having an API security keys and password, access keys and password. This is all open to everyone. There is no control on the engine. But when you go for tower, yes. There is a concept called RBAC. Using RBACs, you can give a control to a particular inventory, particular playbook to a particular user or a group. This is benefit here. 
that is the reason people are going for tower that is the reason there why people are going for tower this is a reason first many people many companies did not agree to go for tower but when red hat has demonstrating them they are conducting a webinars they are explaining the differences between engine and tower then people accepted they agreed and they started using the tower now the smart mm -hmm. management is been you can do it through a tower right i will also show you the tower console also see ansible tower by the red hat and tower expands the automation for the your enterprise what is that controlling scheduling centralizing job knowledge visibility and compliances delegation such as call role based access this is all it is being supported even engine doesn't support any log you know it, it, you write you, in engine there is no log if you are facing any problem you want to look into some log it doesn't give you any log right but for tower yes we have it records each and every log related to the tower right so this is basically how so using tower we can do all these things our backs push button rest full of apis workflow enterprise integrations centralized logging this is the important features of a tower because of these features many people many companies who are using ansible engine they are switching to the tower right so this is i have one more question is yes. okay to ask yeah please please you can go on so you know that right so aws we take aws they go use uh, cloud formation right mm -hmm. so yes is there any way to uh, convert the cloud formation to ansible scripts ansible yaml mm. of, of course you can Maybe. write cloud formation yaml cloud formation write uh, json or yaml right so yeah you, you can whatever you have yes 100% you can use it 100% you can use mm -hmm. it because uh, ansible support uh, ansible support yaml json oh both okay yes both okay. it will support nothing to worry mm -hmm. right so <clears throat> these are the features here ansible tower let me uh, connect to a tower environment here i'm having my tower uh, <clears throat> so one minute sorry <laughs> basically this is my tower basically you can see this this is my tower environment this is the things you can just put username and the password this is a tower dashboard it looks you can just see it's very simple see i have six hosts to manage here you know two hosts got failed and five inventories i'm having i am having three projects here and it is going to every day graph is been shown here how many got success how many got at what ratio the failure has happened you see this is the inventory here this is the dashboard for your tower right you can see all your jobs from here you can see the schedulers from here can you see that this can this is all the schedulers if you have scheduled some jobs right and you can see when you go to the settings here it try to give you the all the information authentication job system inter user interface and license as i just click on the license you can see this see right now red hat is providing two different types of license one is personal subscription the other one is a developer subscription and i have selected a developer subscription developer subscription will be 365 day subscription can you see this my subscription still there for 271 days we have it can you see it is a subscription type is enterprise remember so this is what exactly and i can manage totally how many machines here totally 16 host i can manage including the control node including the machine where we have installed tower software the remaining machines is 10 this is what exactly it is going to work so this is the things here see as you learn engine tower is very simple because when you learn engine you know what is inventory what is um, ansible.cfg file you know how to write a playbook you know how to modernize the playbooks right then when it comes to tower then you know all these things then it is very simple you to work here can you see this this is all the things So this is all about the tower environment here. This is how the tower is going to work. Okay, like as I told you, like Ansible dashboard, job status. You can see all these things: activity, streaming, managing, tracking, inventories, job scheduling. 
this is all the features of yeah, hi one more question sorry yeah yeah please uh, is the tower is the tower free or free for no or tower is you you can get a tri trial subscription our trial subscription okay. is pro our uh, is been provided in two ways one is a 60 days trial if you go for a normal uh, subscription i mean if you take a developer it will is a 365 day subscription they are going to provide right and ansible documentations are been you can get the documentation from here it is purely a web based documentation of course you can download so ansible docs.ansible.com is the link where you can get the documentations here right so this all the things here we have just discussed about introduction all these things we can you can just get all this information what is that introduction tutorials uh, modules documentation lots of ex lots of examples with best practice for the large projects you can get and uh, as a part of this webinar i have tried to show you the configuration file and inventories okay i'll just try to show you the configurations here the ansible configuration file is existing here etc ansible ansible.cfg file is the configuration file can you see this okay based on this configuration file only the entire ansible behavior will be dependent right so this is what exactly and i showed you example about the playbooks all these things so <clears throat> this is a course content i'll try to i mean you can just get into this link and just see the course content and this are all what we're going to discuss okay so let me also put in front of you the course content also yes this is the course content totally 40 hours so i'll just try to zoom it later so as uh, we are planning to start this training from monday the same time seven o'clock so as we start we will first go with an introduction to ansible and we will discuss the term of course today we discuss a lot of things but again we are going to discuss the terminology there and we will go with the installation of ansible we will discuss how to configure ansible control node and manage node how the communication happens all this thing then we start working with something called you know inventories right we will discuss like how the inventory is going to work we will work first with the static inventory then later we work with the dynamic inventory then after configuring inventory and we will discuss about ansible.cfg file and its parameters then we will go with the hadoc commands hadoc commands are very very important you know the the hadoc commands are steps towards the playbook if you if we work more on the hadoc command to make a playbooks very simple for you right and then we will go with the playbook configurations we will see how do we write a playbook here only we will discuss about yaml right so we will detailly discuss about yaml we will configure a playbook we will see how to run a playbook and then we start modernizing the playbooks by using variables we try to discuss what is variable how do we use the variables and we also discuss uh, about uh, uh, what we say secret ansible vault is used for secrets like how do we encrypt and decrypt your playbooks then we discuss about managing facts and we go with something called iteration or loops like we want to create multiple users multi want to install multiple packages i want to restart multiple services how do we do it using this iteration and we will also discuss about deploying files like how do we use a file management here and we talk about jinja2 templating also we will discuss here right so jinja2 templating is nothing but the important thing is templating a playbook okay we don't write everything into a playbook we try to template it okay how do we template it we will see and how do we manage a large projects here using a dynamic inventories we will discuss here here only we will try to take an example about aws cloud and i'll try to show you examples there okay then apart from this we also discuss about parallelization and we will dis parallelism and we try to discuss including and importing files then we talk something about the rules rules are very very important i'm telling you rules are something called well written pro playbooks we call right there are many authors who are going to write the rules and we are going to use ansible galaxy to get into the rules and troubleshooting part will be there and as the troubleshooting is done then we will start getting into ansible tower so first we will discuss about ansible tower features and then we go with installation after the installation we will try to discuss the overview of the ansible dashboard and we will discuss about licensing type and support and how do we what are the services that involves in tower 
then we discuss about our bags where we discuss something about organization roles teams how it works and we talk about static inventories and dynamic inventories and we talk about get okay this is what exactly okay so this is what exactly we are going to do it okay so git is very very important because nowadays we are writing a playbook using vibm but when you go to the real time environment people try to use like tools like pycharm visual studio to write a playbook and they try to upload their uh, playbooks to the git right and from there you know they make some playbooks public and then some playbooks they make it private with password authentication and when you want to run it from your tower you need to give an excel absolute path of the playbook on the git repository so how it is going to work we are going to see so this is the total uh, course content here it's totally a 40 hours training it might go more than 40 hours also based on the examples that we go with so this so is 40 hours means 40 days not 40 days every day one and a half hour we are going to plan we start at 7 and 8 30 oh. we will try to come so it might come within one month also, right? Because we are going to do this training from Monday to Friday, right? That is also one important thing. <clears throat> so we will plan to complete within one month. If one, two days, it might <clears throat> take. So this is all about. So any other questions you can ask me. <clears throat> Or any other queries, you can reach out on my number. Anyhow, you are all aware of my number. You can just contact. So, and coming to this uh, training, like uh, uh, many people uh, don't know, like how much. I mean, many people know about the fees also. So, we are going to charge uh, uh, twelve thousand five hundred for this training. Okay, and the benefit of this training, like we will be providing uh, daily recordings you through the Google Drive, and uh, we will help. I will help. I'll help you out in setting up in your lab. Okay, and the third thing is like uh, we, whatever the playbooks, whatever the examples we are going to do in my lab. Okay, when I'm showing you the same thing, I'm going to share you uh, at the end of the training, not end of the training. As we complete engine uh, training, we will try to share all the playbooks to you with all the examples. Right, so that whenever you have any doubt, you can refer that. So documentation, nothing to worry. Documentation, I'll also share the documentation also. This is exactly. Is it possible to share this demo? Yes, yes, it is recorded. Definitely, I'll try to put across the. I mean, uh, people, definitely. Right, this demo I'll be sharing within one two hours. You will be getting that. Thank you. So, any other queries, any other questions, you can ask me, please. So, uh, I, I don't know whether it's correct or wrong. The, the thing is, where do you, where do you install this uh, Ansible? In your laptop in, in, or? In the laptop only. This is my lab. You can see this. This is my lab environment. Can you see this? I have just morning mm -hmm. patch, like, see, control node, manage node. And uh, if I need, I will try to add, I'll try to add one Windows machine here. I'll try to add one window, Ubuntu. See, I am having Windows and Ubuntu here also. I'll be adding this as a managed node here, right? And this is my yeah. tower node. This yeah. is my tower node. This is my tower node. Just now I connected a tower node, right? Using a browser. This is my tower node, 192, 168. Okay. Yeah, everything is on my laptop. If you want, you can configure this on your cloud also. There's nothing like, I'll help you out. That's not a problem. It's very simple. Yeah, man. Cloud is not free. <laughs> yeah. I'm just giving you an example because okay. the, yeah, because yeah, you should have minimum eight to six, 12 GB RAM. 16 GB is very well because my laptop is 16 GB configuration. I'll be running nearly three to four machines at a time. Okay, so this is the thing. For engine, that's mm -hmm. not a problem. For tower only, it is a big challenge. Why? Because for tower, you know, the configuration should be little high. I'll just try to show you the tower configuration here. You can see we need minimum 5 GB RAM. 4 GB exactly, because here we, we will provide 5 GB. It will take somewhere 4.9 GB like this. So two processors minimum we need. And this is what exactly the configuration. So these are things. So lab setup, we can do it. That's not a problem. And it is uh, purely, a, yeah, please, come on. Yeah. Can I proceed or you want to come? Yeah. 
no no you can you can you can oh, okay so yeah question regarding like if you could talk about like uh, briefly about the linux administration using ansible like for example um, i understand that like we have the concept of dynamic inventory and all this right yes so when it comes to cloud uh, i understand like uh, we can get it through apis uh like for uh, in real time how about like uh, linux administration like how it works in, uh, when it comes to the dynamic inventory and another question is like uh, for example we have like 100 tasks related to linux administration can we do uh, like 80 tasks with ansible and 20 tasks manually uh, is it a good idea or like how it works See, this is all uh, one thing is the entire training whatever we are going to do it right it is purely on system admin only that is called linux examples only we will try to take because if i go with clouds many people don't understand cloud they will face problems right mm -hmm. so what we will do is we will try to do everything on a linux administration only right and uh, next thing here is uh, like uh, uh, when i'm just talking about uh, uh the examples that is all like as you said uh, like 80 tasks and 20 tasks when you're dividing it is all that depends on your requirement okay like if you want to customize you want to separate some task i don't want to do it something with ansible yes you can just divide that task and you can do it manually otherwise you will say that no i want to do everything with the ansible yes we can do there is nothing like that oh okay. right? yes so there as is, as... yeah sorry go ahead there is a lot of flexibility with ansible i'm telling you Oh, okay. okay there's a lot of flexibilities we have there's nothing to worry you can uh, you know based on your requirements you should go with it okay right. so as long as something is managed like some module some components or some ah, configuration is managed using Ansible, we should not do manually right see yes i'll tell you one thing see it's a small example i'm talking about ansible hyphen doc okay uh, doc, uh, I'll just go with find. Find is a module. You know what is the use of find command, right? You want to search for a file or direct. You will try to go with the find command. See, for a find, we have a module. Can you see this? But if I just want to use the, uh, I want to just want to uh, see, is there any module for grep? It says there is, there is no module for grep. Now tell me, how do we use grep? Take an example. You got some requirement to search something in some file, some file for some expression. Mm -hmm. So grep module is not there. Then how do you fulfill your requirement? Using command. This is, ah, using command. Yes, you are right. There is a module called command. So what happens is very simple. When you don't have a specific module, we try to use command module, right? And if you don't mm -hmm. want to, command is just to run an individual command, right? But you want yeah. to run a script, then you need to use shell. There is a module called shell. So this is the way so you should know how to use a modules very effectively here you should know the alternatives you should know the alternative these are very important thing you know like many environment what i seen is they only manage their entire infrastructure using scripts only they write Perl or python or some other scripts and they try to use command and shell modules only to manage their environments especially when it comes to kubernetes i have seen it Mm. Okay, so this is what exactly you have learned so many modules, you're going to learn so many modules, but still you are going to manage entire infrastructure using command and shell only. Because they have written a predefined scripts are there, you need to just automate that scripts using the Ansible. You're getting my point. Yeah, yeah, yeah this is what exactly. So this so, is one of the things. Mm -hmm. Do you have uh, time for other question? Yes, please. Yeah. So uh, regarding the real time environment, like, for example, uh, like we have like 100 servers, like 100, mm. like 80 real servers and uh, 20 centers. Mm. So and if you want to manage all those, like mm. how we build, uh, I mean, for example, I'm not sure, like uh, all the companies have like same DB, mm. uh, like, uh, like, like, uh, like how it works in the in the context of Ansible, like uh, how we build oh. uh, inventory, like uh, dynamically. Yes. Actually, see when it comes to inventory, inventory doesn't know whether it is Windows, Linux, or Unix, or it might be Ubuntu or a Mac, or it doesn't know, right? We try to define in the playbook a condition, right? So we try to use a condition saying that if it is Red Hat, Linux only, it should perform. If it is Ubuntu only, it should perform. 
No, no, no. I, I got that part. Uh -huh. I'm talking about like building the dynamic inventory uh, from very like a uh, high level, like how it can uh, pull the information. Like when it comes to AWS, I understand that using uh -huh. the API calls, we can get the, like using no. the metadata URL, we can get it. But when it comes to the real time Linux, uh, which are uh -huh. sitting in data center, like how it works. See, I'll tell you API calls are just to interact with the cloud console, not to track. Okay, for tracking, we try to use some other scripts. Oh, okay. Yeah, we will try to use some other scripts. Okay, API just to make communication. See, you create one username, one user on a cloud environment, cloud console. Okay, using that user, uh, you know, access, uh, uh, you know, uh, access credentials, you will try to connect to that particular console. You're getting my point. Okay. Yeah. So yeah then yeah. you try to. Yeah. Tracking is different. There are some other plugins we have using that we can. We are. I mean. I mean. It's a part of API only. Don't think like it is. I'm not separating it. When it comes to engine, that is different. When it comes to tower, that is different. You will understand. Oh. Okay. Engine, we try to use some third-party scripts. When it go for tower, yes, as you said, we have a API calls. Okay. okay. Right. So there are differences we have. So we will try to track. We will. We can track. We can get it. And because it is going to give you detail, because when you create a EC2 instance, right, we give a lot of information to you, tag it, you give it some names, right? So using that information, we can just work on it. Okay. Mm. So, okay. So technically speaking, like we, we can uh, just mimic the scenario in our uh, lab, right? For example, yes, yes. I'll show you it. practically, I'll show you, I'll be connecting, I'll be logging into my AWS console and with some credentials, I will show you how to communicate from here, from your console, uh, Linux console, how do we communicate? How do we track everything? I'll try to show you. No, no, no. I'm I'm talking about non 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 cloud. Like for example, uh, the Linux box sitting in data center. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm talking about only the on premise. Okay. Uh, cloud part, I I I got I a little bit like understood. I mean, I I, I could figure out that part. I think. But uh, yeah. data center, I'm trying to understand like how exactly like we build uh, dynamic inventory. Uh, uh, we don't build dynamic inventory. I mean, we will try to track, but uh, we have CMDB tools, right? Inside your data centers. Yes. Uh, yeah, you, using, using that CMDB tools, we try to track your dynamic inventories there. Okay. Right, okay. Like your, any example available online? I, I mean, I never I mean, a Red Hat satellite server, Red Hat satellite is one of the CMDB tool. Oh, okay. Service yeah. now is one of the, um, you know, uh, comes under CMDB tool. Oh, no, 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 I use the tool, but I never cut the, I, I never uh, <laughs> saw the, like picking up the details uh, using some so tool. Actually, you know, that's all th third party tools. We don't have access to it also, because oh, no, uh, right. I have just seen somewhere, like uh, when, when we do a job support, I have just seen that, how they're oh. trying to pull. But even when it comes to our lab server, we don't go much into it. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. I think it's got a big deal. I think we can figure it out. I think later. Yeah, later. we need to see. Uh, like, yeah. Yeah. I think I'm good. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to waste at this yeah. time. Yeah. Fine. So, uh, any other questions, please uh, uh, ask me. Jyoti Raj, Prem Chand, Radhi, Rajesh. Um, yeah. Uh, I have one the... question. Please. I have one question. Yeah, please. So the EC2, suppose if you take the EC2 instance, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that IP number keep on changing it. Yes. If you configure elastic IP, that's fine. But if not, uh, that IP number keep on changing it, right? No, IP address, IP address, it will change whenever you stop and start the mission. Correct, I mean, correct. shut down and start so, the mission. Yeah. Correct, correct. So mm -hmm. in that case, how this, uh, the, Control tower, I mean, uh, control engine. Control that? node. Control node, sorry. Yeah. Control node, identify that the system is up and run. So is there any way to communicate? It will do communicate directly no. or how it happens? See, what we, what we do is we have some scripts to track that inventory, right? Whenever you track, like you will come to know that you have given a tag saying that something called um, some test server, okay? Or else you have given some app server of that so ip got changed mm -hmm. but we give tags yeah. right we give a tags and host names host names are within the mission tags are outside the mission right tagging tagging oh, is nothing okay. but with the tags we try to track it out 
oh for this tag the ip address was previously something else now it is something different this is the way we mm. try to track. it is really tough to track only with the ip address because how i will come to know previously it was 192.168.10.20 10.20 now it has become 10.22 mm. right okay. so tags are very important here tagging will be given there right okay. so tags are static names that has been given to a machine see for example we have a dell server r610 r710 810 right this names are static names right? this has been provided by vendor this is a model of the machine yes or no right this machine this names never change this machine this names never change right a machine has a, some it is going to get some name that name never change the ip address may change but name never change so this is how the model like how do we track it Okay. Yeah. I have one question, one more last question. Mm -hmm. So, okay, the you said like uh, the system goes down and yeah. system come up at the next yeah. day morning. Mm -hmm. So, there is a chance of system didn't come up in the next day morning. Okay. So that also can be tracked with uh, tax only. Yes, because when it doesn't okay. come under your inventory, then definitely we will try to uh, track it, right? we will go and we will see like why the mission is see when the mission doesn't come up we are not worried about it see our our job is to bring the environment up or bring the environment down correct right correct. as administ correct. as a cloud and the, if, in case if you are the only one person who have to handle even mission is not booting means then you need to look after it right so you you even you know ansible ansible will support even to connect your bare hardware also that is a feature that is a benefit here bare hardware means you can even connect your ilom alom consoles also id rack consoles also to manage it of that particular machine yes 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 100% we have modules for it also you can connect directly to your but id how, rack how? we have a modules like oh, we have a modules you, like, yes okay. please but how do you know that modules right whenever you get a problem then only will come to the <laughs> module side right? when we start working with it we need to uh, track the modules very very important okay mm -hmm. so we you, i'll give you the information anyhow when it, it in this training we will be discussing so many things i'll give you the information about the modules also okay i'll i'll let you know like a, there is a, i'll create one i have one documentation where i will try to give you a doc some modules documentation to you so with, with that you will be able to understand oh, so okay i have one more question sorry uh, uh, so, is there any chance of the control goes node goes down uh -huh. in that case what happens if control node goes down then we can't do anything right that is the reason people going for tower tower he also supports cluster why red hat is asking us oh, to okay. go for tower tower he supports clustering if one node goes down immediately the other node take over the Next, yeah, it, yeah, this, yeah this is what exactly In, at the engine level we don't have it at the engine we don't have it tower okay. yes we have clustering is there yes we will also oh, discuss cluster okay. also don't forget don't don't i mean we will also discuss cluster also and when it comes to ansible i'll show you how to set up a ansible tower cluster also nothing to worry uh, Baljender, one last question okay yeah please yeah so you said that like we can manage like uh, VMware ESXi, uh, mm. right? Mm. Yes, yes. So I'm just uh, I mean uh, I never uh, got a uh, really chance to work in real time like mm. end to end. Mm -hmm. So how exactly like Ansible will reach out to your bare metal uh, ES uh, like uh, VMware ESXi? We have a Is modules it? for it. We have a modules for it. Like we have a modules for YUM, right? We have a module with the name called user to create a user. We have a module like EC2. In the same way, we have a modules for connecting to the bare metal hardware. I will oh. try to list even I am not much. I did not research much on it, but okay, I okay. have gone through some webinars, which is provided by Red Hat on Ansible. OK, I'll try to uh, I will try to get you some information in the training. Sure, it's sure. not a problem, yeah. right? Definitely, right? Right. Thank you. Whatever doubts you have, you can put me in. You can just bring it to me in the training also. If I don't know, because there are so many, it's a very big ocean, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I, during uh, the 
uh, yeah, class yeah. time i don't want to uh, disturb in many questions i'll try to uh, bring it offline most yeah often. yeah yeah fine no problem right yeah so that's yeah. it and um, um any other questions you can ask me otherwise we can okay so we are going okay. to start on monday sharply at same time seven o'clock and uh, i will also share other link and uh, uh, if any questions you can reach out me on my number on whatsapp number on my number thank you thanks for joining Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye.